<laughs> oh my god hi everyone this is my oh wait there's my microphone <laughs> although i don't <laughs> hi fiorella <laughs> okay <sighs> i love you too <laughs> So this is my new didgeridoo. <laughs> I, I told you guys in an earlier live stream, I'm making use of this time to learn. Um, I have so many strange musical instruments that I picked up in my travels. I have a couple of kalimbas, which is, you know, this. It's, um, I have a couple of these. I have, um, uh, theremin, which is that instrument that you play by waving your hands over it. Uh, theremin is featured in, um, the song Good Vibrations by the Beach Boys and the original Star Trek series opening music. Um, I have what I have gongs, I have pipes, tuning forks, a guitar. <laughs> I have, and hi everyone, hi Joyce and Leah. I have all these instruments that I buy, and I take a couple of lessons and then I put them down, wander away, and so, um, yeah. oh my God, I'm terrible now. Uh, I think like the bagpipes, it's hard to tell when you're getting good at playing didgeridoo, but certainly people who are really good at it, you can tell. So I'm taking some, uh, an online class. And um, I actually know five people who play didgeridoo who are really good at it. So once I learn the breathing and the technique, uh, I'll reach out to my friends. Um, but I thought, you know, I have these cool musical instruments and I have time on my hands and I would like to avoid doing housework. So, um, you know, uh, putting it all together. Um, I'm here in my bedroom today and I'm going to show you a few fun things back there. I have a variety of wings. I have, um, you know, uh, vulture turkey buzzard has been my animal spirit guide since I was born. So I have some vulture wings. I have some fairy wings. I have different, uh, medicine bags got a couple of my prettier drums hanging and in here I have the drums that I use for ceremony. Uh, this is the one I made most recently and uh, this was the one I made when Sasquatch, a female Sasquatch shaman um, and a mother. She was pregnant at the time and she had a small Sasquatch child uh came and was working with me so this drum is uh for her you see i have a heart and she's just very nature magic and when i make drums i write words inside and out <laughs> and this is um a buffalo hide drum mine mine is made with goat hide um for reasons specific to me this one is buffalo uh some of you know white shell woman and white buffalo woman have been 
you know, mentoring me, teaching me like literally this entire life. So, uh, and white buffalo magic has been very strong with me. I have a white buffalo big medicine blanket that came to me through Curious. And the beaters. I made this one, and this one came with my buffalo. If you're looking, Tambor's Unison is the one that made my really cool tie dyed looking buffalo drum. They're a French Canadian company. I've got my silverware that I Keep spoon bending. I got this beautiful bag in Mexico. These amazing, oh, there we go. There we go. These amazing, this amazing artist family that uh, my mom and I became friends with. But inside it, I have something. And then after this, I promise we'll start the class. <laughs> oh, hi, Amber. So this is a purse, you see? and um you know, ah, there we go i'm super dyslexic so trying to hold something so that you can see it when what you see is opposite to what i see is a little awkward so this purse is on a record and the back side of the record is a barry manilow album it's sung in english but the song titles are in spanish and the one the stag is written on is uh, a tango album. So here's the funny thing. When I was in Mexico, there we go. There we go. When I was in Mexico, the first week I was there was like definitely an adjustment to energetically because it's so different from here. It's so open and all the ancient energies the ancient spirits are still there very very active and it includes a lot of animal spirits but they are like fantastic looking they're um, animal spirits that look nothing like how we see animals in 3d one of the spirits that kept showing up in my dreams but way off in a corner in the back obviously with a lot of other like bright colorful animals behind it was a, a white stag, a glowing white stag. And this white stag was staying off in the distance. You know, like if you're in a field and you see a, a family of deer off across the other side of the field at the fringe to the, to the forest, that kind of thing. And finally, um, I called out to the white stag one night in my dreams and I said, will you please, you know, show yourself to me. Why are you here? What can I do? How can I help you? And then the next day I was in the, uh, the artist's market that I would walk through it every day. It's like four blocks long and it has little alleyways. It's amazing. Um, and so beautiful and i was visiting with a, a friend of mine that that uh my mom and i had made friends over the years with this one lady and she was showing me her children who are now adults had set up their own kiosk so we went they were looking and there was this purse her son had made it and um to make a long story short he had received a vision that was like my vision that this white stag needed to find someone um, but this person would look right at the stag and not understand and i had the vision of course that the stag was looking at me and i didn't know what to do with it so of course i bought the purse and um and then he explained to me it's white but it's also like pale blue so anyway it's um that started a very very cool experience of working with this stag who after this came forward and did a lot of cool stuff together <laughs> so this is my bedroom it's also my 
I have instead of a closet, I have an altar with crystals and things like that. <laughs> um, okay, so show and tell. That's enough of that. My clock says 1111. Perfect time to start. Um, thank you all for joining me today. And, um, oh, look at this. I, this is a skull necklace made by another artist family that we friended. Um, so today we're going to work on our, um, solar plexus chakra. And we're going to connect the solar plexus chakra to the sacral chakra, and then we'll disattach and we'll connect it to the heart chakra. And then we'll disattach, connect it to the throat chakra. And I think that will be enough. <laughs> the solar plexus chakra loves connecting with the other ones, because when you think about it, each chakra has a very powerful, specific energetic purpose. You know, the root chakra keeps us grounded, connects us with earth magic, um, connects us with uh, Gaia. And the more physical, like if you are bringing in divine energy and you're grounded, then you are sending divine energy into the planet. And then when you go and do divine connection work, you have the resources of the planet to support your efforts. So ground, being grounded is being empowered, being stable, uh, dependable. It's a really, really big deal and connected to nature. Um, and then we've also worked on the sacral chakra, which is about creative inspiration, new life and birth, of course um emotions and a lot of emotions like connecting with external emotions or sending emotions out and it's also about um connecting with your guardian angel very specifically uh your gut instinct your solar plexus chakra is um action it's the action chakra so people who have a powerful solar plexus but they do not work with their sacral so a powerful third chakra up action chakra but no inspiration or creative influence are people who usually do well in like corporate jobs or military jobs where they can be like very action oriented but never have to be inspired um and I'm not saying that to slam corporate I'm, or military. I'm just saying, well, you guys know. People who have a strong sacral chakra, but no solar plexus. So they're very creative, but have no action. Uh, very easily become the people who like, you know, the ones that you say, oh my God, this person is the most amazing musician ever, but he can never get a gig. Or this person is an amazing artist or philosopher, but they, um, you know, are on welfare living in their parents' basement. You know, it's, they have a lot of creativity, but no action. The two chakras, sacral and solar plexus, are designed to work together in harmony. You become inspired, you take action. Taking action gives you inspiration. They feed off each other. It's really, really good to work on both of them together. Now they can both work with the other chakras. When you bring in the root chakra, then you know, you're know you very grounded and dependable with all of what you're doing. So if you're gonna be a self-employed artist, that's really important. You wanna be inspired, but you also wanna run a good business. And they love working with the heart chakra, bringing love into all of that. The uh, throat chakra, self-expression, you know, obviously anyone creative or taking action, the more you can have your emotions and your voice in it, um, you know, the more it will be meaningful with others, the more people will feel the connection to what you're offering. Uh, and of course, third eye, 
about receiving and sending out visions and then your crown connecting to cosmic divine non-physical energies and then of course these are just the main chakras in the body we have 2000 chakras and then we have all the chakras outside of our body that are connected to our like sacred anatomy our spiritual non-physical body that's we'll get into all that later we have our mitzi chakra <laughs> little mitzi dog <laughs> uh she's going to be hanging out with us most of today but most of the time she'll just be sleeping on my bed um so uh i'm gonna move my microphone hold on so that mitzi doesn't you know sorry if i'm making noises now with that okay so mitzi isn't rubbing against it um so today i want us to work with our solar plexus chakra which is action <sighs> think of all the times and can i show her chakra points oh can i show her chakra points uh animals have slightly different chakra points than people it's pretty much running the same so we have her little crown chakra and her third eye, her heart chakra at the heart. Um, the sacral and solar plexus is a little different. And the root, of course, is connected to all four paws. But, uh, uh, you know, pretty much the same. Uh, you can look online if you're wondering, um, because people who do like acupuncture and massage therapy for animals and energy work for animals, um they know all of this really well so you can look online for you know where are the bird chakras chakras in a bird the chakras in a fish chakras in a you know in a little four-legged beastie <laughs> so the um thank you leah uh leah's going to find pictures and post for us but if anyone else also feels inclined go ahead you know that we're, it's all about us sharing our information together so the solar plexus chakra can become very easily blocked especially if you are like an intuitive or empathic person it's totally possible that when you were young, you would say, I feel inspired. I see, you know, fairies in the yard. I want to build a little fairy garden. You start building a fairy garden and some kids come along and kick it down and make fun of you. And you're like, wah, wah. when we're young, sometimes we learn that, um, taking non-action is the best way to protect our intuitive nature. And we end up shutting down our solar plexus chakra. Uh, and then later people say, well, you never do anything. You have all these big dreams and you never do anything. And then you're like, oh, I guess I'm just a loser. You know, that's, um, um, you know, or, oh, I used to have dreams of going off and doing something and then I became, you know, corporate or, you know, whatever. Um, and, you know, this is part of life's path. Remember, we are eternal beings who are choosing to express for a period of time in physical form. So whatever experience you have, whether it's the one you planned or the one that just came along, it's a valuable experience for your soul, for your eternal state of being. Always honor the experiences you had and the lessons you learned. And then, you know, uh, become at peace with them so that you can move on. If when you were young, you felt like you wanted to build fairy gardens and people made fun of you so you didn't, now is the time to build a fairy garden if you want or you might say yeah you know what now i would rather do something else 
if you automatically feel a block, like, no, that's not for you, or you don't get to do this, or who are you to think you get to build a fairy garden or anything like that, this is not to demean you. This was a self-protection you established when you were young and naive and had a limited concept of what would protect you from harm, you know, from ridicule. Um, in my case, having bubblegum put in your hair and being stuffed in a sewer culvert, you know, we all had it. Um, that's, but, you know, at a certain point you uh, grow beyond. You may grow beyond while you're in life or you grow beyond after life. So the solar plexus chakra is one that a lot of intuitive people shy away from because they feel like it makes them vulnerable or they feel like every time I connect with my solar plexus, I'm reminded what a great big stupid loser I am. So um, you may find as you're working with it, okay, let's get a little more Mitzi in the picture. <laughs> you may find while you're working with your solar plexus that emotions come up or memories come up or the word no, stop, you know, step away, uh, don't do this, warnings will come up. Or you may find yourself feeling like stabbing pain or heartburn or queasy or so whatever happens. Uh, or you may go, I don't know what Benita's talking about. My solar plexus is wide open, uh, which is great. <laughs> uh, no matter what experience you're having right now, it's great because you are going forward with your experience and that's really special. So, um, whatever experience you're having, whatever you come upon, if it, especially if it automatically wants to repel you, honor it, communicate with it, give it love, respect, appreciation. If we're going forward with the meditation and you feel it's important to stay and work on something and resolve it, then do that. If we're going forward with the meditation, you want to go forward, it is okay to tell whatever you are coming across. I wanna talk with you later. Right now I wanna do this. So can you please like relax for the next 10, 20 minutes and you and I will resolve this issue later. Um, oh, Leah, I'm so, <sighs> thank you. Um, so I just want to say that because uh, whatever happens in your experience in this meditation, honor it and um, look within your own inner resources on what feels right for you to do at the moment. And again, you may go through the whole thing and go, that was fun. I can't wait till the next chakra. Yeah. So. For today's class, what I'd like us to do is we'll do our quick meditation where we bring in the hourglass and we do grounding and we raise up, you know, our crown chakra. And then um, we'll go in and we'll really set the root chakra and get it really stable. And then we will uh, honor our sacral chakra because remember sacral and solar plexus love to work together. We'll get the sacral chakra in really good energetic shape and then we will let it rest. So it's providing a support network, uh, but not actively involved as we start exploring our solar plexus chakra. We'll explore our solar plexus, do a little work, and then we will invite the sacral chakra to fire up and support the solar plexus. And we'll see how the solar plexus works when the sacral chakra is active in it. And then we will fire up our heart chakra and see how that works. Um, when we fire up the heart chakra, you can do whatever you want with the sacral. If you want to keep it active, that's fine. If you want to let it rest and just do heart and solar plexus, that's fine. And then we will uh, do whatever you want with the heart. We'll fire up the throat. And so with the sacral, we're gonna send the sacral to the solar plexus. And with the heart, we'll send the heart to the solar plexus. 
And then we will send the solar plexus up to the heart, to the throat. And again, at any point, you can relax any chakra you want. Um, when your throat chakra is fired up with solar plexus and heart, your self-representation, and remember it's two ways, both outward to the world and inward to self. Your goal is to reach the point in life where your outward self-expression and your inward are the same. So you are speaking to yourself with the same loving kindness that you send out to the world. That's a big challenge, I know. <laughs> so we'll just play with it a bit and then we'll let it calm down and then we'll chat a bit more, okay? And Mitzi is our mascot for today's meditation. Right. Um, so get yourself comfortable. You know, if you want, you can be lying down, sitting up, or if you're someone who needs to be a little active, you know, feel welcome to be walking in circles or, uh, you know, folding laundry, whatever works for you. It doesn't matter if your eyes are open or closed. If they are open, invite them to be a little spaced out, a little unfocused as your spirit vision is projecting inward. And again, we are working with the hourglass shape to our energy, our crown chakra, open up high and wide, coming down to the body and then going back out to the root chakra, going out deep and wide. And all the rest of you in your chakras are just floating there in the middle of it. Invite your feet to relax. From this moment on, we do not take any active uh, control of anything. We just give our body and our energy permission to do whatever it is that it needs to do without micromanaging or forcing anything. So give your body permission to relax. Give your feet permission to relax and invite all the energy that's in your body to flow down through your body, down through your legs, down through your feet, deep into earth where our beloved Gaia, Pacamama, Mother Earth, the mother of all physical nature, all physical reality, is there supporting you with her arms wide open, absorbing all of your energy, transmuting it to the highest form of love and sending it out to all your nature brothers and sisters. As the energy is flowing through your body into earth, you can feel it spreads out wide as your root chakra is spreading wide and deep. Whatever width and depth is comfortable for you to support the energy flow that's naturally occurring. As the energy is flowing through your body, deep into earth, you'll notice that the top of your head naturally, instinctively feels open Divine energy comes down from the universe, the cosmos, the dimensions, the angels, the light beings, your friends of the other realms, it flows down into your light and airy top of your head, into your body, through your body, through the bottoms of your feet, 
deep into earth. And as your crown chakra opens up high and wide, you'll notice your root chakra automatically and instinctively opens up deeper and wider so that you always have a beautiful base of energy to support your wonderful divine cosmic connection. And the energy flow can flow through your body without any issue. Bowman. Through your body, unencumbered, As the energy is flowing, you feel it reaching your different energy centers. Your crown chakra open high and wide, your third eye, which makes the whole center of your head feel filled up with the energy. If you feel any pain or pressure in your head, acknowledge it. This is just your body's way of trying to protect you from anything out there that's coming in. Thank your body for caring so much that it automatically protects you. Give it permission to resolve itself let it know there's no need for pain or pressure. Just flow, energy flow. And invite the energy to flow on down, filling your face, your mouth, your neck, lighting up your throat chakra, your place of self-expression, be it through the words you speak, the art you create, the financial spreadsheet you design, the way you dress, the gait of your walk. Invite the energy to flow down to your heart center, be it heart energy, love, divine love, self-love, love for others. All love is of the same energy, pure. It's the original energy as we were all created from love. and We were all once beings of pure love. One day we will return to being beings of pure love, but we'll have all of these magnificent experiences of life to bring with us as we return to love. The energy flows down to your solar plexus chakra, which takes action in life, gives you inspiration to go forward, to do things, to connect with others, to have adventures. And the energy flows down to your sacral chakra, the seat of inspiration, of divine messaging, your gut instinct, the place where your dreams spring forward down to your root chakra, which grounds you, which brings gravitas to everything that has been happening in your body. You allow the energy to flow down into earth. When you are fully flowing with the energy, from divine to divine, with you in the middle, 
you become a conduit, a conduit of divine love. And Earth thanks you for all of this beautiful food that you are giving to our planet, the light energy. Invite your body to just flow. As I said, our crown chakra is open high and wide. Our root chakra is open deep and wide like an hourglass and the energy always flowing, always flowing. And there you are in the middle of it with all of that beautiful divine love flowing through you, filling you up, flowing down into earth, glowing from you in all directions. So anyone who comes near you is receiving this beautiful bath of love and light. Let's bring our attention to our root chakra. This cone of energy that starts with us and flows down deep and wide grounding us to earth, to all that is special with the physical planet, physical love, all of the soil, the crystals, the water and rocks, the magma. Earth is a living being that is constantly in movement with the plate tectonics and the volcanoes erupting, the ocean currents, the wind, the clouds. When you ground to earth, you are grounding to all of that. You are grounding to all the animals of earth. You are grounding to the spirits of all who have lived and died and returned to earth, bringing their essence back to the planet. That's a lot of energy. Anytime you need additional resources, this is here for you. When you feel tired or worn out, it's my shoulder there. Earth is here for you to fill you up, to support you so that you are solid and grounded. And as all the divine love is flowing down through you to earth, all of that beautiful, powerful earth magic is flowing up and filling within you, supporting you. You may feel your legs feel really powerful right now and your hips as all of this beautiful earth magic is flowing up to support your root chakra and your sacral chakra, your point of inspiration. Invite your sacral chakra to become very warm and glowing. That's your belly, your belly area, your gut. Invite your gut instinct to become activated. And invite your root chakra, your grounding energy, to fill your gut instinct. This is where you get your creative inspiration, where your guardian angel is constantly sending you advice. My gut tells me I should do this. Hmm, that doesn't resonate with my gut. This is where you get the advice of which path is the best one for me to take of the ones before me. Should I walk through the wall, build a door, 
or turn left and follow that path. Your gut instinct is the one that tells you. And it guides you on how to make it happen. I feel like the way to go forward is to make a beautiful painting and then people can see it and they know what I'm thinking. I feel the way forward is to switch careers. It's, you know, I feel the way forward is. This is your sacral chakra. Invite it to become very energized. And you can feel all of that beautiful earth magic rising up through your body, supporting your inspiration. Invite it to rise up again to the bottom of your rib cage, the area where, <coughs> where you would Heimlich someone, although don't Heimlich yourself your solar plexus chakra, where you take action. The part of you that physically sometimes even hurts when you know you should take action and you're not. And the part of you that feels so good and sometimes even pulls you forward when you are taking the action that you know is the right one to take. Your inner guidance system, nestled between instinct and heart, your sacral chakra. Invite all of this beautiful earth energy and all of this beautiful divine cosmic energy to come forward and mix here in your sacral chakra. I mean, your solar plexus chakra. <laughs> Sorry. Your solar plexus chakra here below your rib cage. Invite it all to mix up, invite the sacral chakra to rise up and support it with inspiration. And then take a moment and look into your solar plexus chakra. What is your immediate response? Do you hear, welcome, come and join us in your solar plexus. Let's do things. Or do you hear, uh, no, go away. Every time you do things, you get into trouble. So we're just going to be locked down. Go in and explore. Let your senses become filled with whatever messages you get. Be it auditory, you might hear someone speaking or out of your ear or in the back of your mind, or visions, or... Um, memories or you know whatever you get it might be visual it might be emotional take a moment we'll be quiet for two minutes look into your solar plexus chakra whatever you see acknowledge it thank it for being one with you thank it for caring so much about you that it appears here in your body as either inspiration or protection. Chat with it the way you would chat with a friend that you have just like run into for the first time in a while. Okay. Go into your solar plexus and acknowledge whatever you find. Treat it like a friend.
beautiful. And now, thank your solar plexus chakra for being so open and honest with you. Invite it to absorb as much energy as it would like. And let that energy build a glow in it. Let it light itself up. You may find your solar plexus chakra prefers earth energy, or it prefers divine energy, or it is using earth energy for inspiration, divine energy for healing, or, you know, um, invite it to absorb energy. Activate your root chakra energy, earth energy flowing in, your crown chakra energy, you know, divine cosmic energy flowing in. And if you're feeling any pain or pressure or vertigo or queasiness, remember you're just a little imbalanced on energy flow. So take a moment and adjust your root chakra to spread deep and wide and your crown chakra to be comfortably balanced to that. If too much energy is flowing in, invite the energy to be a little less intense as it flows in to your body through the top of your head, into your body through the bottoms of your feet. Anytime you are working with energy, it is your right to feel completely comfortable. Anytime you are uncomfortable, it's an opportunity to learn a lesson on energy flow and energy management, your comfort of absorption with whatever particular issue you're working with at the moment. So invite your solar plexus to absorb energy and do with it what it will. and invite your solar plexus to take this energy and use it to charge itself up so that it is glowing. Invite it to become as bright and emanating as it would like. You may find your solar plexus will be very bright but contained, or it may be it wants to set out a big wide glow. It may be it wants to send the glowing energy to another part in your body or a specific target elsewhere. So invite your solar plexus to absorb a lot of energy and glow, flow and glow, and then see what, what it shows to you. That is beautiful, you guys. So now we're going to talk to our solar plexus who has just received a lot of love from your body, from your energy centers, from our divine friends of the physical and non-physical. Ask your solar plexus that is so beautifully supported by your root chakra and your sacral chakra to send some of its energy up to support your heart. Your heart has already sent energy to your solar plexus. Let's send energy up to your heart. Your heart center, which we'll work with next week, has the ability to send divine love into your physical heart and through your physical heart into your body, your physical body. It has the ability to send love through your energy center out to others. 
So you are sharing love with the world. It has the ability to send love to your emotional, your psychological bodies, to your sacred anatomy around you, you know, your non-physical body that is also connected with you, to your guides. When you send your sacral energy, your solar plexus energy up to your heart center, just pay attention what automatically activates. Where do you feel it in your chest? Is it in the center of your chest or on one side or the other? Which direction is it going in? When your action center connects with your love center, what does it naturally and spontaneously do? Go ahead and take a moment, find out. Very cool. And invite this energy to rise up even further to your throat chakra, your point of self-expression, which can be to the world or inward to self. Do you say loving, supportive things to the world around you and then motivate yourself by a little bit of self-abuse? criticism or are you more in balance or are you a little etsy ketsy a little bit of both in every direction i think that's kind of natural for most of us invite this beautifully supported solar plexus energy to flow through your heart through love up to your throat chakra see which direction the energy supports, which direction the energy flows, and what happens, what messages come up to you? How does it feel? Wow, that's like a lesson all on its own, isn't it? Take a moment, resonate with all of this. Look at the energy that's happening in your body, around your body, through your body. Think about how miraculous this is. What an extraordinary universe of energy and emotions and connection and power you are inside and out, above, below, around, beyond. Honor yourself as the extraordinary and eternal being you are. And the courage that you have to come and express as this being, this life, at this time. You are amazing. You know, and invite all the energy to just relax. Nothing needs to stop flowing or go away. We're just going to relax it. If you find yourself feeling a little queasy or vertigo or any pressure, that's just, you know, energy sort of finding its comfort, invited to sort of resolve itself so you feel very comfortable. The pressure or pain in your head is usually because as the energy is coming in, you naturally kind of block it a little bit. The pressure or the vertigo or queasiness in your belly is usually because the energy is flowing in and you forget to keep flowing it through. 
So it kind of builds up a little in your midsection. So if you're feeling any vertigo or queasiness, relax your feet, invite the energy to keep on flowing. And if you're feeling any pain or pressure in your head, invite the energy to relax. You might choose to ask for a little less energy to flow in at the moment because you're relaxing. Maybe it's too much gushing in or invite it to flow around you. So you're sort of in the middle of a waterfall of love. Getting washed all over inside and out. So that's our solar plexus meditation. Um, and if you have any questions or comments that you'd like to share, please feel welcome. The solar plexus chakra is um, really, really important. And most of us have no clue it even exists. Or like, you'll notice, I keep calling it sacral chakra. Like we all have the chakras we love to play with and the chakras that we're like, ah, no, thank you. And for me, the throat chakra and the solar plexus are the two that I can just like ignore all the time. <laughs> and um, so obviously that's where I have the most personal lessons to learn by working with these two chakras that I'm constantly trying to ignore, um, that's where I have the most benefit to explore. So as we're doing these uh, chakra exercises, if you hear like, oh, Benita's gonna go do the third eye, yeah, I'm not that interested in third eye, then third eye is definitely the one that you should participate in. Um, some years ago, I was in a singing bowl concert with a few other singing bowl performers. So there's three of us on stage and uh, two of us were playing singing bowls and one person was playing singing bowls and toning. It was really uh, a very interesting concert. Um, and I had the uh, throat chakra, third eye, crown chakra and some of the other upper chakras to play. The person who was toning had the uh, heart chakra and the um, solar plexus and the person, the other person had the lower chakras. So I'm playing and I kept avoiding the throat chakra. I'm playing the third eye chakra, the pineal chakra, the om chakra, the uh, crown chakra, and I'm like, oh, no one cares about the throat chakra. <laughs> no one's interested in that, so I'm ignoring the throat chakra bowl. And then about 10 minutes into the concert, I'm like, oh, the, you know, I'm the one who doesn't care about the throat chakra because I'm hiding from my self-expression. But this audience, we had a pretty good sized audience, a lot of people there. Uh, might care about the throat chakra. So maybe I shouldn't be such a, uh, you know, a miser, an energy miser. And I started playing it. And as I started playing it, I was crying. I was just like, tears were flowing down my face. And I realized um, I was so busy supporting, you know, I had a very active wellness center. I was supporting everyone else's work. And one reason why I was always doing that was to avoid my own work. So that was a big turning point for me. Um, oh, I'm so glad. I need to work on my root chakra more. I love throat. Uh, solar chakra said, hello, I greeted it. Oh, thank you. That's awesome. Um, yeah, a lot of really uh, people like, and intuitive, empathic, find themselves very ungrounded because we associate being grounded with having, to, everyone's like, get real, get back down to earth, you know, all that stuff. And, you know, of course we are real, we are down to earth. We're in an awesome reality 
with this beautiful energized planet. But these words that are used to try to demean and ridicule us and cut us down to uh, put us in a little box vision, we, uh, when we're young, will often connect with being down to earth, being grounded. So we, it's easier to just float away. And we, um, we think if we're grounded, then we will lose all of this great stuff. The truth is, the most powerful intuitive healers are very grounded because they are working with all the energy. Uh, if you're not grounded, you can be working with angels till the cows come home, but you're like a little helium balloon floating around. If you are here to help heal our planet, you got to be connected to the planet. If you're here to just have a fun time and float around, then that's okay too. And again, there's no value judgment on any of that. We're each on our own path. Um, and so, but if you were taught not to be grounded because you equate being grounded with being mundane, this is a great time for you to learn to be grounded and be powerful, become an earth god or goddess. Um, Oh, I'm so glad that you enjoyed it, Leah. And um, emotional release, that's wonderful. Yes, getting emotional releases. There are times I'll go into meditation and I come out, I'm like, oh my God, I didn't even know I had all that emotion in me. You know, I like, I'm like, I'm not a tiny, tiny person, but that was a lot of emotion that I've been carrying around in me for a while. Where, where was it hiding? <laughs> so um yeah yeah that's um that's a big deal so i'll tell you next week we're going to work with our heart centers and um i work with the heart centers a little differently from other people because i work with all three heart centers the heart chakra is um three chakras at once it's the heart chakra that the energy is flowing you have your physical heart, where the divine energy flows in, connects to your physical heart, mixes with all that great oxygenated blood that's being pumped through your heart into your body. Your body is supposed to always be flowing with divine love. That's part of how we stay healthy. And then we have our, I call it the cosmic heart, which is the side of us here that connects with the outer world um the extroverted love so it's in balance flowing in flowing through flowing out the heart chakra here on this side i also like a lot of times if i'm doing energy healing on someone i'll see visions of little things here it's like the clutter drawer for unresolved emotional issues and so I'll say to someone, this is so weird. I just saw a blankety blank and they'll go, oh my God, I thought I dealt with that. That's from when I was nine years old or that's from, you know, so, you know, I see all these weird little visions and by talking with them where, and my doing energy work. And this is usually when I do etheric surgery. So the etheric surgeons are with me. We help them release whatever was there because if you have all this energetic clutter here from things that you think you dealt with, but you didn't 100% acknowledge and release, it gets in the way of your connection to sending love to the outside world. And when you think about it, you bring in divine love and you send it to your physical heart and the love comes back and you send it to your cosmic heart and it comes back. It's like any eternity sign because love is eternal i mean i don't know if that's real or not but that's how i see it and that's how i work with it so we, we will be showing that next week we'll be clearing out clutter and pumping love into our physical body one of the reasons why um people get sick and i'm not saying okay to be very clear sometimes we get sick because we're sick 
sometimes we get cancer because we smoke cigarettes or live next to a mercury factory or our bodies are predisposed or we have a soul contract that this is something that will happen. So I will never, ever, I'm not ever a blame the victim sort of person ever. Even though we plan our lives, things happen. Okay. So, um, but sometimes the reason we become sick or the reason we have trouble healing from something is because we are not sending all of this beautiful divine love into our bodies. And people will say to me, and I know every one of you can relate to this because everyone can, including me, they'll say, my heart chakra is blocked, therefore I cannot flow with love. They're bringing all of their distress up to their heart and then sending it to all the energy flow in their body. So we are in a way polluting our physical body and blocking love because we don't have the energy flow going right. And then we emotionally abuse ourselves. Oh, because my heart chakra is blocked, I'm getting this, this, and that. Um, so if they know the simple technique of sending divine love into their heart, filling their physical heart with love and flowing it through the body, it actually, you know, there's no moral judgment there. It's just a technique that helps to counter effect, you know, the very natural experience of being alive. Um, and if you want to do a little more further research on that, German New Medicine, which was uh, established by Dr. Haber. I think that's his name, a German oncologist who uh, has a remarkable story of of mapping how different emotional states impact our health. Uh, so German New Medicine is a form of hypnotherapy. And what he says, Dr. Haber, I think uh, what he says is, again, as I said, if you have a physical issue, it may be caused by physical reasons or it may be caused by emotional, psychological reasons. But even if your physical issue was caused by physical reasons, emotional, psychological impact will naturally join it. So it's about releasing emotional and psychological connection with physical health and well-being. If you look at the charts for German noon medicine, and this is as complicated as looking at an astrological chart, it's crazy. Um, they are able to trace the emotional psychological impact of every emotion psychology relationship to physical body. Um, and again, not claiming it's the only cause ever. Um, and this is not anything that the AMA backs or anything like that because, you know, it's woo woo and psychological and emotional. So it's, there's no way to really you know, documented in a scientific way, except by doing a lot of interviews and people saying, yes, I had this emotion happen to me. They're like, oh yes. And that explains why you got this issue that everyone who has that emotion has this issue. Um, so it's interesting to research, not because I wanna make you all German new medicine fanatics or anything, but when we talk about the power of love, that's it right there. The power of love is right there. Much more powerful than we imagine. And since we each and every one of us have enormous heart centers, we have a powerful resource here that we can utilize if we know how and if we're trained. So we're we're going to be going forward with that next week, working on our heart centers. Um and um I also want to tell you, I'm going to be uh, uploading all of these class live streams to my online school. That way, uh, and also some additional like uh, handouts and short meditations. So if you want to go back, like if you go and register, it's, it's free. I, I have this class series will be free in my online school. If you go and sign up for it, then you can go and like 
find the old classes you missed and follow along. Um, I also invite you guys to join me on Wednesday nights. Uh, this week we're meeting at 7.30 and then we're moving to 7 o'clock. Wednesday nights are for anyone, you know, like all of these classes I'm doing, I don't care how experienced you are or aren't, they're for everyone. Uh, Wednesday nights we're learning to receive messages. And then Saturdays we're building our energy centers so that we can become powerhouses. It's my hope that all of us become powerhouses that are flowing with energy and receiving cool messages and inspirations. Um, you can either use this ability to help our planet or to get through quarantine, having a good time, or to become a powerful message receiver or a powerful energy person, or just, you know, kick back and be a little less uh, bored or frustrated or to help you manage your emotions and your energy. Either way, you know, um, feel welcome to share this information with your friends. Um, if, if you think it's helpful to them and not just me, anyone, you know, anyone who's doing any kind of energy, kindness or friendship, feel welcome to share it with your friends because, uh, going to be a long haul and that's how we're going to get through this. Um, so I'm going to sign off. Tomorrow, a lot of you guys have been asking me about the visions I've been getting about what's happening with the coronavirus and all that. Um, and so tomorrow at Sunday at 11 a.m., I guess the same time, I'm going to share that. I know I've shared some of it and I've kind of held back a lot of what I'm seeing because, you know, when you see visions and you share them, you know, people can get pretty uh, mean or angry or, you know, uh, no one likes to hear what's coming. And then afterwards, I'm like, I told you so. I always sound like, uh, you know, um, I don't know. I don't feel like it benefits me, <laughs> but um, a lot of you guys have been asking me to to talk about my visions of this next year. And since my visions of this next year have been with me, like since I was a child, I'll do that tomorrow. Let's see. Um, so, um, great, great. It looks like. Uh, Mitzi, yeah, thank you, Nazi. Mitzi is very, very happy. She, she came from a traumatic situation and now she's like, goes on 10 walks a day and she's like spoiled and happy. Um, yes. And, you know, if you guys get a chance, if the weather is nice um, and you have the ability, go outside and hug a tree or lie in the grass. Um, if you are stuck in a place where you can't go outside, um, you know, lie down on your bed, play some beautiful music and imagine you are. I'll tell you the Monroe Institute, uh, originated by Bob Monroe, Monroe Institute on their website and on their YouTube channel have a lot of free downloadable videos. And some of them are about being out in nature. They're really wonderful to listen to because they're uh, hemi-sync, they're like biurnal beats. So they're recorded in two frequencies at once. And when you listen, they sync up the two hemispheres of your brain. Um, so it's like really healing and soothing. So that's always a good way to go. Um, and I've been talking with friends who have been telling me like here in Virginia where I am, there's a lot of places you can drive to and go for walks where no one will be around. Uh, some of the universities that are shut down, you can go walk there. They have really beautiful greenery and um, you can walk undisturbed. Uh, some of the county, state and national parks, while well, they closed off the parking lots, you can park in the street nearby and walk in. Just make sure you're not parked anywhere where you can get a ticket. But if it's legal parking, you can park there, go in and 
walk around. Uh, we've been walking in Riverbend Park, Scott's Run Nature Preserve, uh, Turkey Run Park, um george washington university uh george mason university um some of the neighborhoods just rolling around the neighborhoods like no one's out so even if you're in a place where you feel you can't get out you might find there is a place you can get out just stay far away from people <laughs> i hate giving that advice but we all need to have common sense and stay safe um oh yeah leah what do you want oh this wednesday oh my god you guys um sorry one more thing and then i promise i'll get off this wednesday night open for anyone who wants to join i don't care if you've been around the last few wednesdays or not this wednesday is so much fun we are going to be scrying with the black mirror or the smoke smoky mirror anyone can do this like even if you've never meditated in your life. All you need when you join this Wednesday is a mirror or a piece of black obsidian. Um, it doesn't matter if it's a floor to ceiling mirror or a small hand mirror, or if you're sitting in your bathroom, looking in your bathroom mirror. Um, we, um, we're gonna do the Toltec smoke mirror dream time connection, which is awesome. And then we're going to do the, um, shoot, what's it called? I always forget the name of it. It's a room, Psychomantium, the Psychomantium style black mirror look. So um, you'll want the room to get dim, not dark, because you need to see the mirror. And this can happen if you have a dimmable light switch or if you're in a room with a window. So when all the lights are out, you still have outdoor light coming in. Or if you take a flashlight and put it upside down, or if you have a candle, or if you have like a small lamp with, especially if it has a colored light bulb, red or blue, that you have on the floor behind you. And we're gonna look in mirrors and invite uh, angels, people you love who have passed, uh animals you know we're going to invite all kinds of visions dream visions um ancient gods to come through it will be really fun i promise and it shouldn't be creepy <laughs> um, it should be fun and interesting and again you don't need to be like any powerful psychic or anything it's a technique that all you need is your to open up your imagination cut loose and invite whatever comes through to come through and you know it's really cool so um oh there's more comments so leah what did you the beaches are closed but local parks are still open cool um can our bodies be used as a pendulum yes yes i do this all the time uh, especially when i'm grocery shopping and you go in there's like five or eight brands of something, I will invite my body to find whichever brand is the one that's best for me. And I'll just sort of like, okay, which one of these, whatever is best for me, my body will start leaning towards one or the other, or it might lean all the way back. Girl, there's no brand of Cheetos that's good for you. So um, yes, you can use your body as a pendulum. There are some people who will do like the two fingers when it's um, a positive statement, you know, your fingers don't snap through. And if it's a negative, they pull apart. Um, I don't really care for that one personally, but um, I, a lot of people I really admire do that. There are some people who will like, uh, just like when the doctor says, put your arm out and they're pressing, they'll do that with their finger. Um, you know, they'll ask a question and if it's yes, they feel they have a lot of strength and if it's no, it pushes down very quickly. So yes, you can use like a lot of the, you know, yourself as a pendulum. That's cool, Leah. That's cool that you've experienced that. Yes, muscle testing, pendulum. Hi, Peter. Um, 
So you may find as you're going forward with this work, techniques will naturally show themselves to you. And you're like, wow, I didn't know I could do this. Or, oh, you know, um, as I said last Wednesday, you may find um, those who were very wise long ago who have passed will become forward to you in visions and saying, I'm going to teach you something ancient that's been lost, or I'm going to teach you something so that you can join those who practice it. So, you know, get ready and enjoy it all. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Before I ramble too much, I'm going to head on out and go work in my, uh, my greenhouse on this very cold, rainy, windy day. So. I love you all. Stay safe, stay healthy, honor yourselves on all levels, and, you know, love yourself. All right. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. I'll be back tomorrow morning at um, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to give prophecies of the coronavirus future as you can see it's hard for me to take myself too seriously but i love you guys and i take your hearts seriously bye